the current state of the Chinese property market reveals a dichotomy. On one hand, the government reassures the public that support for the housing market will not cease, emphasizing that real estate remains a cornerstone of China's industry and that houses are still worth buying. On the other, it appears that the government is getting jittery, rapidly divesting its real estate holdings, even to the point of dramatic sell-offs. Recent news about multiple state-owned enterprises selling a large number of properties has blown the lid off the true state of China's real estate market. On September 19th, the Chaoyang District Housing Construction Committee in Beijing offloaded 154 uncompleted properties worth 1 billion yuan. Following closely, on September 20th, the state-owned Assets Supervision and Administration Commission of Jinan bundled and sold 1,341 properties amounting to a value of 2.8 billion yuan, marking the largest sale of state-owned properties in Jinan in recent years. Even as properties bundled by Beijing and Jinan state-owned enterprises were still in the market, the state-owned Assets Supervision and Administration Commission of Guangzhou began its sales. On September 28th, Guangzhou disposed of 200 properties valued at 500 million yuan. Insiders suggest that the properties sold in cities like Beijing, Jinan and Guangzhou are just the first batch, a way of testing the waters. There are still over 400 properties owned by the Chaoyang District Housing Construction Committee in the China Railway Construction International City. Additionally, announcements from Jinan hint at a gradual increase in property listings based on the bidder's needs, indicating further properties might be rolled out. Only when the tide goes out do you discover who's been swimming naked. With plummeting housing prices and the realisation of who has been the most aggressive in the property speculation game, it's clear that the government isn't just a participant, but a major player. Beyond the recent spotlight on state-owned enterprises selling properties, other enterprises had previously made similar moves. Before Jinan Urban Development Group Urban Renewal sold 1,341 properties, the Jinan City Construction Investment Group had offloaded parts of Dongchen Yijia and Xijiang Huafu, amounting to over 6,000 residences, a portfolio of assets estimated to be worth tens of billions. It's expected that more state-owned enterprises, such as Jinan Lichen Holding Group, Jinan High Tech Holding Group, and Jinan Lisha Holding Group, which also have significant property and land holdings, will follow suit. These surprising moves by state-owned enterprises have naturally raised eyebrows and concerns. The public's questions can be distilled into three. First, why do these enterprises own so many properties? Second, why are they selling them? And third, what do these actions imply? Real estate influencer Cherry's Big House analysed the situation, pointing out three main sources for their state-owned properties. First, local government bodies taking over after property developers face financial difficulties, acquisition through land auctions, and lastly, direct purchase from developers to provide housing benefits to employees. More detailed analysis of the origins of these state-owned properties are provided by online bloggers. Let's discuss the origins of the properties being offloaded by state-owned enterprises in places like Beijing's Chaoyang and Jinan. Today we will categorize and delve deeper, introducing the concept of quote, limited competitive housing in land auctions. The broader context is this. During 2015 to 2016, there was a monetary shift in housing reform, leading to a surge in the national land market. As housing prices soared, the underlying land prices followed suit. This trend was observed nationwide. But by 2017 and 2018, the combination of land prices and taxes made up the vast majority of housing prices. The so-called construction safety cost was a minor proportion. 
At this point, land regulation became stricter, aiming to control land prices. Traditionally, land auctions went to the highest bidder, but now there was a price ceiling. For example, a 30 million yuan cap for a certain area. Once this cap was reached, other aspects became a focus of bidding. These included self-retention, gratuitous transfer, and bidding on other conditions. In the case of self-retention, developers would bid on how much of the development on the acquired land they would retain without selling. For instance, if a project covers 100,000 square meters, apart from the basic facilities like property management office, all other areas could be sold. But now, developers might bid to retain, say, 10,000 square meters without selling, or even more. The winning bidder would be the one who's willing to retain the largest portion, even though higher retention means higher costs. Many developers, eager for land, willingly bear high costs and high retention rates. In the second case of gratuitous transfer, facilities like residences, shops, and even institutions like schools, kindergartens, and sports venues are handed over to local state-owned enterprises for free. These properties might be used by local governments for affordable housing or resettlement purposes. The costs borne by developers for such gratuitous transfers are eventually embedded in property prices. The third type involves bidding on other conditions, like in Hangzhou, where developers bid on development plans. Official media reports have described these properties as housing reserved by developers at the request of the authorities. However, such explanations haven't convinced the public. Many netizens questioned, if it's resettlement housing, why not distribute it to the people? What is the government doing holding on to them? Others sarcastically commented, who's hoarding and speculating on houses? Who's the real culprit behind the policy of houses of a living in, not for speculating? Now we see the true reason they won't let housing prices fall. The sudden massive sell-off by Chinese state-owned enterprises is telling. One might say this move contradicts China's current real estate policies, which aim to support and stabilize the market. The sell-off by these enterprises is effectively undermining that support. The inclusion of first-tier cities like Beijing and Guangzhou in this wave of sales indicates these enterprises recognize the downturn in the real estate market. Holding onto these properties for longer would only mean greater losses, hence the need to cut their losses, even if it means selling the low market rates. Reports suggest that the prices of properties sold by these enterprises have been reduced by amounts ranging from 700,000 to 1.3 million yuan, equivalent to selling at 80 to 90 percent of their original value. This aggressive pricing strategy aims to quickly recruit capital in a sluggish real estate market. Another factor in this sell-off is the local debt crisis. Due to the overall decline in real estate in recent years, confidence in the property market has waned at higher echelons, strengthening the resolve to de-emphasize property-driven economic growth. Coupled with the decline in the land market, there's been a sharp drop in revenue from land sales. In 2022, nationwide land sales revenue was 23.3%, lower than in 2021. And in the first half of 2023, it declined another 20.9% compared to the same period in 2022. Most urban development heavily relies on land-related finances. With a significant reduction in land sales revenue and the burden of massive debts incurred due to past dependence on land finance, local debt crises loom larger. Selling off properties becomes an attractive option for local state-owned enterprises. They have come to realise that many properties they hold are unlikely to appreciate. Instead of waiting for prices to drop further, they prefer to sell at still reasonable rates to alleviate local debt pressures. It's akin to making early repayments on the loan. 
However, for the current mainland property market, a significant influx of government-owned properties is not a positive sign. With the downturn in the property market, it's already challenging for individuals to sell their second-hand homes. The influx of a large number of new properties, including unfinished ones, makes it even harder for individuals to sell their used properties. The current state of the real estate market suggests that not every property can be sold just because one wishes to. Two sets of data illustrate the state of the property market. First, in August this year, Chinese developers had over 647 million square meters of unsold residential properties, an 18% increase year on year. This figure indicates that houses have not been sold in the past two years exacerbating the inventory pressure. Another statistic is that the total scale of domestic debt due this year in China's real estate sector has increased by 13.3% compared to last year. Currently, in major cities, there's a surge in listings of second-hand homes, with price reductions commonplace. Hence, unless local state-owned enterprises significantly reduce property prices, the destocking cycle is bound to be slow. Mainland media reports suggest that there are few genuine bidders for the government's property sell-off. To ensure that every prospective buyer can acquire a property at a base price, sellers have had to utilise a pre-registration system to prevent multiple bidders from vying for the same property. When state-owned enterprises are offloading properties en masse, it implies that significant policy changes are imminent. With the relaxation of purchase restrictions in first and second tier cities, price control policies might also soon be relaxed. Previously, Financial experts had analysed that when the bubble in China's real estate market bursts, the Chinese government won't be able to sustain it indefinitely. They would have to let housing prices crash. But before letting go, they will ensure the safety of funds for government institutions and state-owned banks. Thus, the divestiture of properties by official agencies can be seen as a massive exit signal by these enterprises. On September 23rd, at the 2023 China Real Economy Development Conference held in Dongguan, He Kang, Deputy Director of the Financial and Economic Committee of the 11th National People's Congress and former Deputy Director of the National Bureau of Statistics, said, China's housing supply was enough to accommodate 3 billion people. While this might be an exaggeration, it's possible given China's 1.4 billion population. His statement is a pessimistic hint that given the oversupply and uneven distribution, there's no alternative but to let the market correct itself. His statement triggered public outrage. Netizens criticised the excessive construction of houses, questioning, if we knew we had so many houses, why did we approve so many projects and also allow pre-sales? Accusations arose, blaming the short-sightedness of higher officials, with comments like, only those retired dare to speak the truth. An article published on NetEase titled, the Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Development Complete Survey on the Number of Houses Nationwide. Regulatory Changes and Possible Significant Changes in Property Tax Levies It disclosed that China has 600 million buildings, not households or units. However, more specific data wasn't released. Earlier, on August 5th of the previous year, the Real Estate Research Institute, Baker Research Institute, released the 2022 housing vacancy rate of major cities in China report. The report showed an average vacancy rate of 12% in 28 major cities, indicating oversupply and inventory backlog risk. The report was later pulled down, and apologies were issued, with speculations that much of the data was not to be disclosed. 
Why is it such basic data publicly released? The potential impacts, such as drastic market fluctuations, are unpredictable and can't be controlled. In other words, even if the government perceives, through data analysis, that many cities are facing severe imbalances in housing supply and demand, inflated real estate bubbles, excessively high property prices, and pressures from population outflow, it cannot openly address these issues. Publicizing such data would likely steer the situation in unpredictable directions, potentially triggering a selling frenzy in those cities with excessive housing and high vacancy rates, or a buying spree in those cities where housing prices are low and supply doesn't meet demand, or even large scale population migrations. The Wall Street Journal, sensing the changes in China's property market, released an article titled China has second thoughts about controlling prices in its multi trillion dollar housing market. The core message of the article suggests reconsidering price control measures, specifically the policy that property developers' actual selling prices shouldn't be less than 15% of the price filed with the government. This indicates that discounts exceeding 15% might be acceptable. The phrase Hard to predict consequences implies that the risk in China's real estate market have been suppressed for too long. And with the vast volume of risk assets, no one can anticipate what will happen if these pricing regulations change. Another implication of hard to predict consequences is that real estate is a highly region specific industry. The Chinese government would find it challenging. To implement comprehensive national policies, which might lead to inconsistent practices across the country, resulting in enormous risk. The Wall Street Journal's report wasn't based on any exclusive insider information, but drew inferences from the Chinese state media's ambiguous statements and referenced some opinions from consultancy firms. Concerning the future of China's real estate, The renowned commentator Wen Zhao expressed his views. He believes that in the upcoming economic crisis, first tier cities like Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and the Pearl River Delta and Yangtze River Delta regions will be relatively resilient in terms of housing prices. However, compared to the developed economic zones of other countries, the resilience of Chinese first tier cities could be stronger. In the unpredictable Chinese real estate market, the most rational choice for the general public is to follow the leaders. When everyone notices that central enterprises and state owned agencies start selling properties, it suggests a significant drop in housing prices is coming, giving a clear signal on the course of action. Concluding with a comment from a netizen. Beware of the avalanche moment. Beijing, Jinan, and Guangzhou state owned enterprises are selling off housing stock. They are political weather vanes, and one should act according to the direction. If the market still doesn't improve even after relaxing restrictions, it shows that all measures have been exhausted, which is the most significant bearish sign. After the arrest of Xu Jiaying, Other real estate developers live in fear, desperate to cash out. Local governments are considering relaxing price restrictions, so beware of a real estate avalanche in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm.